Salutations, players. It is I, Marius von Perfufeldink, emissary to the Emperor, Lord Karl Franz. Long may he reign. Today we will be bringing you a war boss tutorial on how to paint the state troopers of Middenheim. Now a little bit of fluffy goings on before we begin, shall we? Towering above the Drakwald forest is a sheer sided pinnacle of white rock atop which sits the fortress city of Middenheim, the city of the White Wolf. The White Wolf is the sign of Ulrich, the god of battles and patron deity of Middenheim. The cult of Ulrich is centered around the region and the impressive Temple of Ulrich is a wonder of the city that attracts many pilgrims. A powerful army clothed in the city-state colors of the blue and the white garrisons the nigh impossible walls and tirelessly patrols the roads leading to Ulrichsburg, the rocky plateau on which Middenheim stands as if besieged by the surrounding forest. And so it is, for the Drakwald is dark, dangerous and synonymous with peril. The Middenheim banner depicts the white wolf standing guard over the fortress walls and gates into the city, a sign of Ulrich protecting his own. Now that is from the uh, uniforms and heraldry of the Empire. I've also looked at Warhammer Empire, the website, and it says there uh, that recently the city was besieged by the bar barbarian forces of the traitor Archaeon. This army had ravaged the lands to the north of Middenheim for many months, but reached the city a broken and pathetic rabble. Lacking any understanding of the arts of the artillerist or the sapper, the dispirited army broke upon the Vorschlag or Ulrichsberg mountain and left not a scratch. The the arrival of the Emperor at the head of a large and well-trained army sent the barbarians fleeing only to be cut down as they ran. Now, um, let's see, let's see. Today we'll be, we will be painting um, in the colours of the city Middenheim, which is a little bit different from the city-state colours of Middenland. And uh, more specifically, we will be focusing on this unit of renown. We will be painting uh, a member as if he belongs to this unit of renown called the Swords of Ulrich, one of the many regiments formed by and paid for by the Temple of Ulrich in Middenheim. So they will worship Ulrich over Sigma, uh, <coughs> the heathens. And it says that the formidable training of the Swords of Ulrich consists not of marches or weapons practice, but instead of patrols and war parties led out of the city into the surrounding drug world. Initiates hoping to join the unit must accompany such, such excursions and only those who fight with honor and survive are admitted. It is left to each soldier to equip himself in the blue and white colors of Middenheim. Since the regiment's founding in the days when Count Mandred rallied the empire behind him and became emperor, the sons of Ulrich have borne yellow shields into battle. By tradition, each shield bears a variation of the same device, a red wolf signifying Ulrich embattled. The grim northerners have little room for formal ceremony, but what they lack in parade ground discipline, they make up for with savagery on the battlefield. So they're called the Swords of Ulrich, which I guess implies that you can use them as, uh, you can use the swordsman models from their current state trooper line, and just painting the shield red, uh, yellow, with a red wolf to signify. So we will be making one of these chaps today. And I've already picked out a suitable model here. Let's zoom in and take a look at him, shall we? So he has a shield, which we can put the device on, and also a little parchment bit on the shield. And we will be using mostly blue and white with accents of red, um, which will be very good. So now I will hand this over to Warboste to continue with the tutorial. Thank you there, my friend. Uh, Marius. So this uh, model we're going to be using is a state trooper model. You don't have to um, use this exact same one. Most of the techniques carry over to any state trooper model. And um, I guess we will begin in uh, just a minute. Okay, right off the bat I'm going to tell you that we're going to be working with a lot of blues and whites. So I'm going to be using um, where is it? Here it is. A lot of the new Citadel base colors, Ceramite White, and uh, as well as uh, I don't have any of the new base blues, but I'm going to be using a lot of Regal Blue, as well as for a little differenti differentiation, some Ultramarines Blue from the old line. So let's start 
with a regal blue top. And this guy's wearing a uh, piece of a, a breastplate, so I'm gonna keep that in mind. And I'm gonna be thinking that I wanna give this guy some white trousers so those stick out. And um, let's give him a blue blue arm or blue uh, blue shirt. I think uh, with this ultramarine, no, with this regal blue, I'm also going to be giving him a little bit of spot colors with red on the poofy sleeves. <coughs> so why would you want to start? Uh, why, why why would you want to do? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Why would you want to do a midden Middenheim scheme? Middenheim and Middenland, the actual province, are a little bit different in that Middenheim has um, has more white and red accent colors. The colors of the city are actually blue and white instead of just Middenland. I think it's like purely blue. So why would you want to do this? I think the um, instead of doing something like Altdorf, which is blue and red, and it seems to be the new standard for GW's um, Empire Army. Well, from a fluff perspective, it might be cool to do something different than all of the other Hail Sigmar armies. Um, you could also say that... Sorry, my white now, step two for the trousers. You could also say that it's um, more interesting to paint. Uh, it's definitely going to be, you know, a lot of, with all the white, you're going to really need to, uh, you, you can really show off your skills as a painter is what I'm trying to say. Because white is a, uh, you know, it's one of the, it's universally been one of the harder paints to use. And the new paints have made it slightly easier. easier to go on. It's new ceramide white. Got a lot of details on this particular guy. He's got like a sword or a little dagger I mean. As well as um, an hourglass and some parchment seal. Purity seal, kind of, for those of you who play 40k. Yeah, and if you get some of the old, um, what are they called, the old Teutogen guards, the big beards, and um, very, very much Ulrichy, then, oh, sorry about that, then they might make uh, interesting counts as for your great swords. I'm gonna let that dry for a while. And while we do, we're going to be painting some... <coughs> Averlin Sunset. Onto the shield. Goodbye, Ian Den Dark Sun. Goodbye, Tau Sept Ochre. The new hotness for yellow is Averlin Sunset. It goes on smooth. Still want to use a. I don't know. Now that I see it here on this thing, on the shield, it looks still pretty streaky. It's not as bad as the old uh, 
like golden yellow, but yeah, it's not that great. You just gotta let this dry, I guess. Let each coat dry, but that's just like the old. Nah, whatever. Okay, so what are we gonna do next? Why don't we paint the shoes? The shoes we're gonna be painting in a dark leather color, so we're gonna be going with our old friend Calvin Brown. And for any of these, if you wanna use the new GW equivalent. All you have to do is just look at the Games Workshop website for the conversion chart. And it'll it'll let you know what the new paint equivalent is. It's not gonna be exactly the same, which is a bummer. Uh, but it's gonna be the next best thing, usually. Even if they say they're just as good as the old foundation paints, and I'm really, if the bases are just as good, the base colors, I'm still gonna miss these guys. We're really good to have. Oh, I'm getting a text message. Yay! People like me. So, oh hush, something about where I can pick this uh, Ultramarine's blue. Let's keep going. Let's, we might not use the Ultramarine's blue after all. We're gonna go back to our Calvin Brown. Now we're gonna paint the straps on the armor. short sword right now. It's pretty good. Okay, so in this step, as you can see, I uh, added in some basic material and just painted the scabbard on the guy's back. I'm going to be adding in the silver now, so I'm going to be using chainmail for this step. And we're going to be painting the helmet, the breastplate, and of course the sword. I think if I could do this tutorial again, I probably would have picked a guy, now that I think about it, with a beard. Uh, Ulrich was very, very much about the awesome facial hair. All the space wolves. Uh, hello, yeah, 40k Ulrich the Slayer. The whole city of the White Wolf carries over quite nicely. I 
there's a Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay book from second edition uh, for like their main campaign. You know how like <laughs> um, in in first edition the campaign, the big campaign that everybody loved was called The Enemy Within. That was an awesome campaign, but in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay version two, second edition, there was uh, I guess the main the main campaign was. Um, all about the adventurers going to like big places in the emperor empire like Talapheim and uh, and they stop in Middenheim for a little while and uh, I remember reading in the book about how the, the city walls are like all scorched and and just really poor They don't look very well. In poor condition. They got blasted by hell cannons and all sorts of craziness. And I was like, wow, that's that's pretty awesome. So they really tried to keep with the Storm of Chaos worldwide campaign in the fantasy game. In the battles game, uh, but it's sad because in in the role play fantasy role play, you never get to meet with Archeon. You never there's no grand meetings with like the emperor or um, you know any of the elector counts or anything. So it just never felt as epic and awesome as it of as an adventure, which is too bad. So I'm painting the. Um, Painting up right now the hourglass right there. I'm gonna do a little hourglass tutorial so you can see if that's something you might like to do. I've decided I'm gonna take the ultramarines blue. <coughs> this step, and we're gonna paint the gauntlets. So this is where our little difference in blue is gonna come in. This might not work. I might ch change to another color, but for now. This is what it'll be. This is actually, now that I think about it, it looks more like what Middenland, the, the entire city state, might have. The blue, different shades of blue. That's okay. <coughs> now for a spruce or something different, we're going to take Macrite Red and we're going to paint in slashes. Like slashed sleeves. Paint those in. Um, if you're using the new range, then using a uh, Mephiston red would work as well. Okay, so to paint in the um, the hourglass, <laughs> Woo. bless you, monster. Thank you, Igor. Uh, hey, Igor, while I have you, could you find me some shadow gray, please? Thought we had some around here earlier. Oh yes, of course, Master. Shadow Grey, coming right up. 
So we're gonna take some shadow gray and we're gonna paint it right on top of the hourglass. There we go. Oh, we haven't even gotten to this guy's skin coat. Skin tone. Yeah, it's skin color. That's all right. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm just gonna clean up the areas around the gauntlets. And uh, let's take some. While we're waiting, let's take some of this Talarn flesh and paint in the skin tones. So you could really think of some really fluffy, um, fluffy army builds now that I think about it, because in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and in the Storm of Chaos campaign, the, the great enemy got right up to the gates of Middenheim and uh, the Emperor came in, Karl Franz, saving the day, like always, but um, your army, your Middenheim army, could have, you know, bits of character and fluff from either, like, defending the city gates to maybe they were out on a patrol when Archeon's army uh, rolled up and maybe they were doing some guerrilla-style fighting behind enemy lines or maybe, maybe there were some of the brave defenders of the city that <laughs> had to uh, jump on the walls and defend the place. It's a lot of great fluff that you could make for your background of your army. Just kind of touching up the yellows now with my Afrolin sunset. Before we get onto the face. I think also we're going to paint this guy's hat, a uh, feather on his cap in white. Just to, you know, give him a little bit more white on his uniform. And if you have the really terrific Sigmar's Heirs source book for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition, then it tells you even more about the city of Middenheim during uh, during the invasion. It tells you about the people of the city-state. Tells you how dour and serious and militaristic they are. And uh, really great, really great um, for any Empire army. Sigmar's heirs. See if you can get it. It's just chock full of great background fluff and information. We're gonna let that dry <laughs> and um, while we do let's get some uh, den of stone and we're gonna paint the uh, parchment paper. These could be Thinking about just a grim and fatalistic empire, uh, superstitious, fatalistic kind of view of the world that these common soldiers have. They could be the names of comrades lost in battle, could be uh, a prayer written down on the eve of battle, it could be you know, a whole bunch of different things, but you can be really creative with how you how you paint your it's your little purity seal. We'll call it your fantasy purity seal. Yeah, right now our our 
our glass should be just about full or uh, dry. We're gonna paint ceramite white onto the feather now. So this is good because if I had a whole unit of these guys, then they would all have these white feathers in their caps to tell them apart from the other Midlanders. I'm also going to use denim stone on the shield parchment. The video is about to run out of time, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, we're back, and um, we're going to now add a little bit of um, a little something something into the hourglass. We're going to add sand into the hourglass, and we're going to do that with snake bite leather. So you're just going to take a little bit of snake bite leather right at the tip and you're going to just paint see how close you can get into this this hourglass piece here okay steady Igor yes master we're really going to just get it into the top here and then Tiny bit on the bottom. So it's okay if if it comes out all weird and wonky looking because we're gonna clean it up now with our shadow gray. So shadow gray, we're gonna go right back in and let's see. Let's have more sand on the top than the bottom. This guy's got a little bit of time left, so we're just going by the angle, and there we go. Easy. Now, we're going to put a touch of Rackarth Flesh, the new Rackarth Flesh, or Commando Khaki. Just a little bit on our brush, and we're just going to highlight the sides of the hourglass, this, uh, the sides of the, of the sands. So we can see a little bit of an outline, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and to wash that all off, we're gonna put on some gloss varnish. And this is my hourglass recipe for all of you at home. Pretty cool. When you wash this on, it's gonna make it reflect, make it look like, make it look like glass. You can see that. Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna wash our model and get it suitably dirty. And the colors we're going to use, sorry, just fixing up my shield here. Let's zoom back out. The colors we're going to use is R. <laughs> a sermon blue for the clothes. <coughs> and uh, let's see if we can find that. Sermon blue for the clothes. And Madab black for the armor and the um, weapon as well as the any leather bits. So let's start with the dab black. And this will be the last step I think we'll do today. It's leaking into the base. You can tell I'm slowly building up my uh, 
my base while I'm going. Now Badab Black, I'm pretty sure in the new Citadel range is called <coughs> Nuln Oil. Got that. All right, zoom in a little bit. If you don't have any of the old Badab Black, but you have known oil, then you are right on the money, so to speak. Skip the helmet if your guy doesn't have one. If your guy has a cap, then either a white cap or a blue cap or red cap would work really well. With the shading, like always, we're sticking, sticking close to the recesses. As much as possible. Good stuff, good stuff. And we're also getting, don't forget to hit up the parchment, the leather. I was just about to say, I need new bed of black. My pot's almost out. But, uh, I won't get it because bed of black is in the old range. I should be saying, I need new known oil. <sighs> I don't know. The new paints just don't sound as cool to me at this point. <clears throat> I need new XV88. My XV88 is almost all gone. A sewer min blue. For the blue. Also get your uh, Ogren flesh wash ready or a Raiklin flesh, as it were. Whatever the, whatever the kids are using nowadays. I'll always love how dark a Sermon Blue gets. It's good stuff. Okay. What are we going to do with the pants? Well, with the pants, we're going to take Beda Black <coughs> or Known Oil and we're going to add an equal amount of water to it so it's not as dark. And we're going to go and give the pants as even a shade as we can. This is really just to get into all the, you know, all the grooves and and furrows and whatnot. It's gonna help us when we're highlighting back up in just a little bit. Wanna make sure you don't get it all over the place. You don't want it to to dry too much in the in the wide flat surfaces. We're also going to do that with the feather on his hat.
and that's really just to show you where all of the um, where all the shadows are in his feather. Ta da! All right, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna um, work on my work on my base, and uh, <coughs> in just a little while we'll come back. Oh, can't forget the over flesh. Hello. Ogren flesh. Okay, here's the model as it looks right now, as it stands, and I'm gonna let him hang out for a day, dry, and uh, get some, do some basing on him, and then tomorrow we'll come back, finish him off. We'll also put some bit of black hair on the parchment on his shield. We'll also paint the freehand wolf on the shield. So I'll show you how I plan to do that. And um, hope you guys enjoyed how to paint a Middenheim soldier, one of the city guard, not. Um, one of the provincial Midden Landers, <laughs> Midden Nedland Flanders, <laughs> and um, also the his little uh, hourglass there. See how that that ended up pretty cool. So really simple, three steps, um, really for the for the actual um, hourglass, not counting the silver. I mean, just painting the glass is just shadow gray, some browns, and then the gloss varnish. So. Hope you liked it. We'll see you tomorrow when this is all dry and we're ready to finish this guy up.